Yo, what's going on guys? So the day I finally came, I got the i9 13900KF uh, CPU. Now this is the one without the integrated graphics because uh, my motherboard doesn't even have integrated graphics. So I decided I'd save 20 bucks uh, and install that. And so it'll be in my MSI Z690 Unified motherboard. And I'm using the Thermal Grizzly uh, Intel contact frame, which helps apply even pressure on the uh, cooler to use and also helps deliver temperatures. So I'm going to get that installed and I add the car in the thermal place and then with my Corsair A270i uh, E-Lite uh, LCD installed. So let me get this uh, installed. I'll do an overclock and we'll show the BIOS settings and then uh, we'll do some uh, uh, Cinebench R20 test, R23, uh, CPZ uh, benchmark, and then uh, we'll see what else we can do. Time spy, things like that. And that's with the uh, Asus Strix RTX 4090 uh, graphics card. So stay tuned. Yo, what is going on guys? So it's been a long past 24 hours. I had to do an OS reinstall. I had to reinstall all my games. Uh, because for some reason I installed my i9 uh, 13900KF uh, processor. It just totally like destroyed my RAID setup. It made me... Uh, it. I tried to reset up RAID and reinstall uh, the OS on RAID uh, 0. And for some reason it just would not install. So basically I'm only running... Uh, a single SSD this time, but I want to show you the overclock settings I uh, managed to find uh, stability with uh, with my i9 12900, uh, I'm sorry, i9 1300KF, which is the processor without the iGPU. So I did a 5.7 gigahertz all core overclock, so the core ratio is 57, and then I have the E core set to 45, so 4.5 uh, uh, gigahertz. And uh, let's see here. So voltage I have at um, 1.285, and that seems to be stable at that uh, speed. And I can boot uh, two windows at 5.8 gigahertz, except it requires a lot of voltage uh, to be stable in the uh, Cinebench R20. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and boot into Windows, and then uh, we will uh, run some benchmarks. And I'm going to do the gaming test another time, because I guess you guys were right. It's my headset that is causing uh, you guys having trouble to hear me. It's a Logitech uh, G733, I believe. And for some reason, I guess the quality is just not that good. I used to have an Arctic, uh, I think it's an Arctic Novus uh, 3. It's the newest one that, that's basically been out. And I had that, and I remember you guys could hear me perfectly fine on that. It's a higher quality headset. For some reason, this one, it's just muffling my voice or making it hard to understand me. And I noticed in my past videos where I did like car videos where I'm driving and making videos, you guys can hear me fine. But ever since I got this headset, I've been getting a lot of comments saying you guys can't hear me. Uh, They're saying to speak louder, speak slower. So I guess it's the headset. So I, I will basically boot into Windows and we'll do some tests like uh, Future Mark, Time Spy and Port Royal. And we will test uh, Synbench R20, R23. And then we will do a CPU-Z uh, benchmark, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so I'm in Windows, and here is the overclock settings on CPU-Z. So 5.7 gigahertz all-core overclock. And I got running uh, 32 gigabytes of G-Scaled uh, PC 6400 DDR5 RAM. And then the main board is a MSI Z690 Unify uh, motherboard. With the latest BIOS as of uh, 5 da or sorry, 10-11. Uh, so. I'm going to run Cinebench, and then I got core temp here open. I will keep this uh, always on top, so we'll see the temperatures as I run the process, and uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and run it. Now, temperatures are basically, they usually get up to about, I think, 92C is the highest I've seen a core go up to. And it basically runs pretty fast, at least compared to my Ryzen 9 5950X uh, CPU. So it's already done pretty much. And then the scores I've basically been having uh, are around 15,000. So that score that I just did just now, 15,153. And then the max uh, CPU temperature looks like it was 92C on a few of the cores. And then cooling is a Corsair H170i Elite LCD. It's a 420 millimeter radiator. Pretty good uh, cooler for an AIO. Obviously, it's not custom, but you know it is what it is. Okay, so I will also uh, do a time spy run, and then we'll see what the CB score is of my RTX Asus Strix RTX forty ninety. Uh, but next, I will run uh, CPU Z uh, benchmark. So stay tuned. Okay, got to run the CPU Z benchmark. So let's go ahead and go to the benchmark tab, and then let's click bench CPU. Oh, 
hopefully like, you guys can see that there. And then the temperature on that run, it didn't get as high because it obviously isn't that much of a hard test to do. But CPU single thread score of 922.3 and multi thread score of 17386.8. Alright, now I'm going to run Cinebank, Cinebench R23 and this is at the same overclock of 5.7 GHz and let's go ahead and run the benchmark. Let's do uh, single core first, single core first and then we will do a uh, multi core. Temperatures. Looks like this one takes a little bit longer because obviously it's only a single core test. So my first time running uh, Cinemage R23, I actually haven't uh, run it before, so. This is the first. I guess it takes a lot longer than uh Okay, so I'll let it run and then I'll uh unpause it when it's uh done running. Well man, I did not expect it to take that long, but it was running for quite a while. So it's just about done and I will show you the score live uh as it uh, finishes up here. So this is Sunbench R twenty three single core uh score. Oh, I guess there's still more to it. I'll come back. Okay, finally, we're just about wrapping up. I couldn't believe how long it took. And there's a timer here, which I didn't even notice until recently, but uh, even it runs all the way to zero and the test still runs. So looks like it's just about done. And then we will show you the score live uh, finally. So I guess next time I'll just run the multi-core tests uh, because that took a long time. Okay, so i9 13900KF uh, multi or uh, single core is score is 2173. So took a darn long time, but at least I got it. Okay, now running the multi uh, threaded test, and this one looks like it also takes a long time. So I will let it run, and then I will uh, unpause this video as it completes. And just if you guys are curious, the temperatures are getting higher. Looks like one core hit 97C there. So it looks like I'm probably going to just keep it at 5.7 gigahertz as those temperatures are definitely creeping up pretty high. So generally I don't want to go over 95C and I already have a few cores getting 97C and I could really uh, start to hear my AIO uh, really kick in and my radiator fans kicking in. So definitely getting pretty high here. So 98 degrees Celsius. Uh, as long as I don't see 100 I'm not going to be too worried but yeah definitely pretty warm. Pulling a good amount of power too as well. 293, 300 watts. And then the BIOS I have is set for water cooling, so basically it has like a really, really high uh, power limit. So it basically almost unlimited it pretty much. Okay, we are on rendering pass 8 and it's getting hotter and hotter. So I have a few cores at 100C. Hasn't gone above that. And I know that's, a, I think that's a TJ Max of this chip, I think, I believe, until it throttles. So. Obviously pretty warm and expected, you know, these chips do run hot, so just keep that in mind for cooling. You definitely want to use either a custom cooling or a really, you know, really high-end AIO, which I'm running a 420 mm radiator. Corsair H1, H1i 70 Elite, but it's definitely running pretty warm. Here's how everything looks inside the case. Look at cooling temperature, 38 degrees Celsius. And you can definitely hear the fans uh, spinning pretty loudly for the radiator. Guys, unfortunately it was just getting too warm. I was getting up to 100C. I decided to cancel the test. I'm going to run a 3D Mark Time Spy. And I'm doing a super high overclock. This is uh, with the core voltage all the way maxed out. Uh, core clock, additional 205 MHz. Memory overclock, additional 1250 MHz. And power limit is rated 220%, which will be 600 watts. So the i9 13900KF is at 5.7 gigahertz all core overclock. And then these are the stats from GPZ. Resizable bar is enabled. 
and I'm going to start the test and we'll see uh, what kind of frames per second and uh, megahertz clock speed we get. Okay, current loading time spy. And uh, as for the Cinemage R23, I'll try to do it again with a, maybe a cell, uh, under voltage uh, would probably help uh, lower the temperature. So we're at 3090 megahertz, pulling 455 watts. My AC Strix RTX 49 is absolutely screaming. The fans are 100%. So definitely could be loud, but no coil line. And it looks like we're maintaining 3090 megahertz. Again, the fan is 100%. And my i9 3900KF is at 5.7 kilohertz, all four of the clock. Now, with, uh, MSI Afterburner doesn't support uh, these new 13th gen processors yet, so they only show the temperature and usage, they don't show the wattage, unfortunately. And that's another reason why I'm going to wait to do the gaming test until uh, they release a new beta or even a final stable release that supports the new 13th gen Intel processors. And then we'll see uh, how everything goes. So I'm going to let this continue to run and then we will show the score at the end. Okay, we're on the final test, the CPU uh, benchmark, and this is where the CPU sits at under load with the uh, time spy. Looks like you got up to 68C. And let's see the score live. Hopefully it's pretty high. They see it was stable. Time spy score 30, 33,652, graphics score 37,842, CPU score 20,678. So pretty uh, high and the clock speeds pretty much maintain 30, 90, and 30, 75 megahertz throughout all the tests. And uh, pretty uh, solid score. So thanks for watching. And uh, I will also just do for fun, I'm going to do Doom, Doom Eternal at uh, 1440p and 1080p at this overclock. And then just to see what kind of frames per second. And then until then, we'll wait till I get the new headset. Because this, new, this headset is just not good. I'm going to return it. It's just not, the quality is just not there. And then uh, we will uh, continue uh, on from there. Peace out. Okay, running Doom Eternal at 1440p, maintaining 417 frames per second. Bear with me, I, I don't, I'm, you know, holding the camera also, but I'll show the graphic settings. Everything is maxed out basically. So uh, 1440p resolution, all the graphics, and DLSS is off by the way. It's completely off. Ultra Nightmare, Ultra Nightmare, everything's maxed out. Chromatic aberration off, and film grain is off. And uh, so I will try to oops, play a little bit, even though I'm only one handed here, but 473 frames per second. And then uh, let's quickly go to 1080p just to see what happens. And this is definitely higher than what my um, i9 1200KS did. Oops, I didn't mean to. But, I'm so used to doing 4K. Okay, 1920 by 1080p. Apply. Check that out, guys. 530 frames per second. That's without DLSS. It's insane. Crazy. So I just, just wanted to show you that quick test. So that's about it. I appreciate all the support. Um, stay tuned for when I get the new headset. I'll do more uh, gaming videos. And uh, we'll take things from there. So I apologize for my previous videos. I know it was hard to hear me because this headset, I guess, is just not the same quality as my Arctic uh, Novus Pro 3 that I had, which I actually returned because I felt like I wasn't going to do any streaming videos. That's the only reason why I returned it. So I decided to try this one out, but it's just not the same quality. But uh, overall, I'll rate the i9 1300KF a pretty uh, solid processor. Definitely, uh, definitely runs warm. So if you're doing high overclocks, you definitely want to. Um, you know, have good cooling for sure. But if you're running at stock and maybe undervolt it, it won't be so bad. Uh, but mine definitely uh, had some high temperatures uh, throughout the gaming sessions. And uh, so, yeah. Until then, I'm going to probably get some rest because I spent all, literally all last night from early morning hours to very late uh, installing all my all my games. I did, uh, I installed Cyberpunk 2077, Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Play Simulator. 2020 which takes forever to install by the way for those of you who know that Microsoft servers suck for downloading games uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, Need for Speed Heat, and Watch Dogs Legion, and Grand Theft Auto 5 so until then I will try to do more tests but for now I'm gonna get some rest I'm gonna try to enjoy the weather it's a nice day out today it's gonna be like 75 degrees I'm gonna do some stuff outdoors 
and definitely return this piece of junk headset. So if you're ever looking at this G, uh, what do you call it, uh, Logitech um, G733 at Target, don't buy it. It's like 170 bucks or something, but it's crap. So I'm going to return that and go back to the Arctic Novus uh, 3. So until then, thank you for all the support. I appreciate all the comments and uh, see you guys around and see you guys for the next videos. Peace out and enjoy your weekend and enjoy the weather. Go outside, do something fun. Don't just be indoors. It's boring. <laughs> see you guys around. Peace out.